Hey guys, this is Shandan and you're watching Educate India and today we are going to discuss about Kubernetes. Kubernetes is one of the trending DevOps technologies. Nowadays many companies are using Kubernetes for managing their Docker containers. So I'll be creating some series of videos in which I'll be discussing about Kubernetes architecture, then Kubernetes setup and also some hands-on experience. So we'll start with the basic concept of Kubernetes. So in this video, we are going to discuss about uh, what is Kubernetes, why do we need Kubernetes and what are the different Kubernetes resources. So let's start with the first question that is what is Kubernetes. So Kubernetes also known as k is an open source system for automating deployment, scaling and management of containerized application. So as we know that, you know, microservices are growing nowadays, many companies are using Docker containers and microservices. So we need some kind of orchestration tool to manage those containers. So that's where Kubernetes helps in orchestration. So K8 orchestrates containerized application to run on a cluster of host. So it's mainly developed by Google. Google announced in 2014 and officially released in 2015. So Kubernetes is very popular nowadays. Why do we need Kubernetes? So let's understand uh, by looking at one of the scenario. Let's say at some point of time, the project can have hundreds of containers or thousands of containers containers or microservices running. So at that time, if uh, you want to manage those microservices or containers, it's very difficult to manage each and every container. And let's say if container is going down, so again, uh, bringing back those containers. So we need some kind of orchestration tool. So orchestration tool normally manages all the connections and uh, tasks running for the Docker. So orchestration tool manages everything by itself. So that's where uh, Kubernetes comes into picture and Kubernetes helps in managing large number of microservices or large number of Docker containers running for any kind of application. And Kubernetes is also offering some of the advantages, uh, like one advantage is high availability or zero downtime. So if you're using Kubernetes, so then uh, Kubernetes will make sure that application should be always available. So let's say in any case, if Docker container is crashing at the time, Kubernetes will make sure that it has to bring back that container. So Kubernetes uh, make sure that application downtime so should be zero or application should be always available. Another advantage is scalability or high performance. So let's Let's say if application load is increasing so kubernetes has capability to scale up for the application so it can scale up the application and then it can make sure that it is balancing that load so kubernetes has a feature of uh, you know maintaining the performance so it provides very high performance also the third advantage is disaster recovery or backup so let's say if application is going down so there may be a chances you can lose your data so if you're using kubernetes for your application so kubernetes will make sure to take all those back up for the containers and later point of time when it will spin up the container so you'll have all those your backups and data ready so it helps in the disaster recovery as well now we'll understand what are the different kubernetes resources so these are the different different terms used in the kubernetes world like pods deployment services ingress config map secrets volumes stateful set so these terms you'll uh, know if you are using the kubernetes world so these are the common terms you should know about the kubernetes so we'll start with the pod so pod is the smallest unit in kubernetes so we generally say like it's abstraction over container so in kubernetes you'll not heard about the container you'll directly deal with the pod and uh, pod is just abstraction over container so the second thing is deployment so deployment is useful because in kubernetes the smallest unit is pod but will not be directly creating the pod we can create the pod using the deployment so deployment is nothing but the blueprint for the pod or we can say abstraction of pod so if you want to create any pod so we generally create deployment for it and deployment will automatically create that pod for us so deployment is just blueprint for a pod and also we should know like pod is having the unique ip so in kubernetes whenever we create pod so it generally gets one unique ip and let's say if pod is getting destroyed so that ip will also be destroyed and during recreation pod gets the new ip so at that time like let's say if any other application is referring that pod or that application so at the time you have to change your ip address so that's where services comes into picture it generally refers the pods so when we want to connect to any kind of pod so we generally create a service for it and service will have the permanent ip so that even if pod is going down so service will be referred to the other application so 
that's where no need to change IP address in any other application configuration. So that's where the services is always helpful and uh, we can create two different type of service external and internal type of service and also there is a concept of ingress if you want external access to the service in many scenarios the application will have its URL or application generally have its endpoint. So those endpoints mapping with the IP so we can directly do with the help of ingress. So ingress helps in getting those endpoints we can define the routing rules and uh, those routing rules will be part of the ingress rules and uh, normally the traffic will go like whenever we'll try to access any application to the browser it will go and first check in the ingress controller that will forward the traffic to the ingress rule and then it will forward the traffic to the services and then services will forward the traffic to the pods so that is the complete flow in a kubernetes cluster Another thing is a config map in Kubernetes. So config map, it's just a kind of, you know, configuration. So let's say if you want to store any non-confidential data, so we can visually store in config map in Kubernetes. So it's kind of key value pair, but kind of it stores data in the plain text. So we can store all non-confidential data in config map. Another thing is secrets in Kubernetes. When we have a sensitive data like key, token or password, so those data we cannot store in config map. So we need some kind of uh, secured a place where we can store those data. So that's where uh, we generally store all sensitive data in the Kubernetes secrets. So we can generally encode those data using base64 and then we can uh, store those data in the secrets. Now another thing is volumes. So uh, there is one concept of volume in Kubernetes because let's say if uh, hundreds of containers are running at the, at the time and let's say if even if one or two containers is going down so there is a chance to lose those data because in Kubernetes cluster we cannot store data permanently. So we need some kind of uh, permanent data storage device where we can store those data. So that's where volume is also helpful so we can attach a permanent volume to the Kubernetes cluster for those data backups. Let's say if container is destroying so we'll have some data we can attach any volume with a Kubernetes cluster and pod can directly access those volumes and also there is a concept of stateful set in Kubernetes mainly useful for the database applications so let's say if you want to uh, create a replica set of database so let's say if you are running multiple databases uh, nodes at the time if we are storing the data so there may be chances of data duplicacy or data may be duplicate uh, when you know we are having a multiple versions of uh, containers running for database so to maintain the states or for the stateful application we generally use stateful set uh, for the persistent storage and uh, so this is also very helpful when we have a database kind of uh, application so we can create a stateful set and we can store data using the stateful sets so these are the different uh, important components of kubernetes in the upcoming videos we'll be discussing more about the kubernetes architecture and then we'll do a basic setup of kubernetes in local system and then we'll see like how we can directly interact with the Kubernetes cluster using kubectl commands. So we can directly interact with all these components. So we'll see all those hands-on experience in the upcoming videos. Thanks for watching.